Hey guys, Ryan Nordahl here with Epic Whitetail Habitat LLC. Welcome back to the channel. If you would please, smash that subscribe button, give this video a like and a share, and hey, any of the products and tools that you see me using in these videos, you can always find links to those in the description below this video. But today, I want to talk about water holes. We're out here on the property today. We know that we've got a water hole that we're going to set. We know that it's a great location. There's a couple bedding points that come off a food plot that's in the center of the main ridge. We're going to locate that water hole in a great funnel location already that gets the most deer traffic, but all those points and stuff too come together in that stand location. We figured out that stand location first, how we're going to access and what wind directions we can hunt that stand on effectively without being detected by deer and we can hunt that stand from dawn until dusk in the evenings. Why? Because the way the thermals settle in that area as well. Yes, you can hunt a stand from dark to dark without having to move throughout your property. And that's crucial when it comes to hunting a smaller property like this. This is 80 acres. I still consider 80 acres a very small property in comparison to others that are out there. It is, even my neighbors to the west of me, 160 acres or whatever it is. That's still, in all relativity, it is a small property. But as you go down the line, 80 acres, cut that down to 40, cut that down to 20, cut that down to 10. The more attention to detail that you have to pay attention to but this video is about water what size water tank well in the past i've taken 30 50 gallon drums cut them in half placed them in placed my critter stick in them they worked there's no doubt about it that they work any water sources you know any way to get deer to water to define their movement to a stand location is better than nothing at all. There's no doubt about it. This is a high and dry property, this proving grounds. It is. There's no water on this 80 acres. But even a neighboring 20 acres that I have permission to hunt, there's a cool water stream, spring-fed stream flowing through that property. But I've watched the deer more often than not drink out of that stagnant pool of swamp water versus drinking out of that cool, clear water in that flowing stream. But you've got to position these water tanks where they're, where it allows you to sneak in and out of that stand location totally undetected by the deer that you are hunting on your property. But what I find has worked best for me in the past and for many others out there, my clients and many other land managers as well out there, is a 100 gallon minimum. Why a 100 gallon minimum? Because less often I have to go in and fill that water tank, the better off. Now I've seen all kinds of things. You keep your 300 gallon water reservoir that you would carry in on a trailer or whatever to fill those water tanks. I've seen them place stationary there they're bringing in another water tank to fill that and then filling their water tank with the water that's in that reservoir tank that's fine too but you still have to go to that tank and fill your smaller water tank or i've seen people take and put like a roof system over their water tank well to the side of their water tank with a gutter system coming off of that tin and draining down in. But what I find works best here is we're utilizing the topography of this property. Yes, even on the ridge tops, there's still topography that we can use and take to our advantage to keep these tanks self-filling. Four years ago, my little boy and I, we installed a water tank and that's the last one we put in. It's a 100 gallon water tank that I found at an auction. Guys, you got to get resourceful. You can't be afraid to go to an auction sale, like a farm auction sale, because more often than not, if they had livestock on that property, they're probably going to have a water tank, such as a Rubbermaid 100-gallon water tank or larger, maybe even smaller. You know, farms is a great place to find, you know, 
even like a 50 gallon drum or whatever that you can cut it in half again some water is better than no water at all i'm not trying to sit here and sell you on the size of water tank but 100 gallons works for me because there is a per driven purpose behind it and that is I don't want to have to go in there that often if I do have to fill it. I don't want to have to go in there as often as somebody that has to go in and fill a 30 or 50 gallon drum that's cut in half, go in and fill that water tank. Because I'm going to lose, even in the summertime when a deer's water requirement really isn't that high, I'm still going to lose a tremendous amount of water to that baby in the sky right there. To just natural evaporation. A hundred gallon minimum takes that evaporation out of the equation. This year, the new water hole that we're going to install is going to be a 300 gallon tank. Even less trips in here. But back in, up again to that last hundred gallon water tank that I installed, it was located in a spot that already gets a lot of deer traffic through. You know, you got your main trail, you got your perpendicular trails coming into that spot. It's a perfect funnel for deer already. We never filled that tank after we after we installed it. The natural runoff and the way the topography is around that water tank helped drain that rainwater right into those tanks. And one of the best things that you can do after installing a water tank, no matter the size of it, is fill a layer, inch or two, of the soil that you excavated out of that hole to install that water hole and place that in the bottom of your tank as well. It flavors the water. I know that sounds counterproductive, being mud and all, but it does. It adds some minor minerals and nutrients into that water as well. There is a benefit to it, I guarantee it. But I see guys going in, and I've done it myself using a white, you know, like a white barrel that's cut in half, um, blue swimming pools, blue barrels, whatever. Again, some water is better than nothing. And any type of container to hold water is better than nothing at all, especially on a high and dry property like this that has no pond or free-flowing streams running through it currently already. The, the nearest water source here is about 100, 150 yards off of our northwest corner. I want the water here on my property to define that deer movement. And they're placed in strategic locations coming off of food sources, even our small microplots, and going back off into their bedding areas funnel into that it's a social area already why not add a little water to it why don't I like water sources in the food plots themselves there's a number of reasons why I really don't have a specific reason why I don't like food or water in the food source already um, I want it back down away from the food you know, even just 20 yards off the food source, back in a social staging social area, is a great place to have an effective water source that you're able to hunt totally undetected to the deer that you're hunting in accordance to the wind direction for that stand location. But adding a water hole to your hunting location is a great way to find deer movement no matter the size of the tank that you use. Some water is better than none at all. I just find that a 100 gallon minimum works for me, works best for me on this property and the other properties that I hunt and my family owns. Hey guys, again, thank you for watching this video. Give it a like, give it a share. Leave a comment down in the comments below this video or wherever you're watching this video on, whatever social media platform. God bless you. Enjoy your properties, guys. This doesn't have to break the bank. Keep it simple. Keep it fun. I understand that not all of you have deep pockets, can hire an excavator to come in or anything like that. I'm only simply sharing ideas that you can do with basic hand tools 
and the resources that are available to you. You don't have to break the bank at all. Enjoy what you're doing. Have fun doing it. Do it as a family. You know, on the weekends, if that's the only time that you get to do any of this stuff, yes, I'm blessed that I can be out here doing what I love every single day of my life. It's how I make my living. There's no doubt about it. But it can be a great time to spend time with your family and friends doing these types of projects. Have fun doing it. Keep living the dream. God bless you all. Thanks for joining me.